let's start out. This was a commission from uh, someone in Paris and they asked me to do a traditional painting. Um, I think it was two months ago or something that I got the first email um, and they wanted me to paint a witch. I was completely free. The only thing that they requested was that it's kind of big and it was safe for work because this was to um, put in his office and also that he had bright color. At first I had a painting started that I had for a witch artwork and I was wondering if he would like me to basically just start from that and just keep on working with it but the design was very dark and he wanted more bright colors so I figured that I could just start over which is fine with me but this is like the first time really that I'm doing a commission that I'm really free basically to just do my own thing the only request was bright colors witch and traditional so I did um, tell him that I will work on a painting with oils, acrylics as a base and then finish up the layers with oils and yeah so I basically just went into this creative process so this is the reference board that I've created because I wanted to just know more about what he wanted and I didn't want to just go with the flow and just do like something completely random I feel like whenever you want to create something very specific for a client it's pretty important to have an idea of um, where to go because which is like so vague and so large from for a theme that I was really confused at some point because I was like um, what do you want like a dark witch something a bit more cheerful a young a witch or a woman um, like the style and everything it was really hard for me to pinpoint really at what he wanted and uh, and I'm and like <laughs> actually the, the client was very much you know just I don't know like do your own thing you know I was really free but it was a little bit confusing at first because I'm used to when I was working with customers I'm used to them being very precise or very demanding or very you know commission is sometimes kind of be tricky because you want to be able to express yourself but you're also responding to a demand and I didn't want to like do anything that the customer wouldn't like but I also wanted to be free doing my own thing so usually I stay away from commissions because of that and this time I was like gosh like someone actually reached out to me they are ready to pay for the price for like a form painting and they tell me that I'm pretty much free to do whatever so I figured that I could at least help guiding that customer and I offer to do a reference board which is what you're seeing right now and so I've collected all of those from Pinterest I don't know exactly who is it from um, because whenever I collect stuff on Pinterest I'll just like save up images and I don't really pay attention to that which is not something you should do but um, I did track down the artwork that I've used as a reference so I can know really who is it from but based on what he told me um, I basically collected a few things for like posture for style and color choices there's a lot of like bright neon blue and pink and then some darker like sky blue or just a darker twist I also add pictures for the pose as well as actual drawings and the only thing I really recognize here is like Ross draws and some painting from Tanya Shibatseva, I don't know exactly, I'm not sure about that um, and other things but I haven't really kept track of that so what I did is I created this uh, reference board with all of those I sent that to the customer, that is the first thing and I told them to you know, pinpoint at what he liked, what he didn't like and if he could uh, let me know, you know what were the requirements and all of that so customer just replied with uh, saying that he really liked uh, this picture on the bottom so one like out of all the pictures that I've selected he only picked one which was good in a way but also very like uh, still confusing for me because I couldn't just base an artwork entirely on one piece 
uh, it's not my style, it's digital, it's a full on like full view, full character and I really wanted to um, make like a cropped character, maybe like to the knee or something because I wanted to have enough room for me to actually um, paint in detail, especially on the face. And so I asked him, can you act can you just pinpoint at at least one other design, one artwork or photo, whatever, uh, something that you like to, because it will help me if I have two. And so he picked this one up top here from Gretel Lusky, and uh, because he really, really liked the colors. So that was more helpful for me because I had a, an idea of the style, really how he liked and the colors and uh, the pose and the components like the magic and all of that. So that helped me a lot with this, those two. I will link the actual reference Instagram uh, from Instagram below the video if you'd like to check it out. I hadn't heard of Greg Lusky ever and I really really like his work so I was really pleased with that. Uh, but this was done with watercolors or maybe gouache so I couldn't really use that technique myself within like my medium with acrylics, it's a little bit harder to do, but I still thought that I could implement the colors. So I add those two and then I started to work on sketching, but I couldn't really do any poses. So I'm going to show you quickly the, I think it's the concept art right here. It's this one, the color version, but I did have that. So at first I was working on a random pose. I think this was based from this here, um, this girl gonna zoom out. Oh, gonna zoom out. I was using this at first, but I didn't really like it. However, I kept the actual arm, which is right here. And then I did my own version of the torso, and I couldn't really do anything with the <laughs> with the bottom. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time. So I went back on my reference, and I've selected this artwork from Bonabi. Um, just for the pose and like the twist of the hips and I really like that it was floating um, like galaxy dress so I've used that up and with all of those that I have right here I've created this concept I had like another idea but and an another face but for some reason I've cropped the artwork and I can't find it. Um, so it's just lost forever, but it's, it wasn't the best idea anyways. Um, so yeah, I worked on that. Uh, make sure that I had like lots of motion. I had it like the candles around her, the moon, all the like thing that you can think of when it comes to doing magic. And I also really like her face and I haven't used any reference for like all the um like the actual face and the hair and everything i've only used it for like the actual posture in the bottom and then i worked on the colors so i did a quick very quick concept with colors just to place out some shades because he wanted bright colors so i wore stayed basically with this family of like um indigo blue purple mainly and then popping some like pink basically like in this reference and the only thing that I haven't used is this like very orange glow because I didn't want to incorporate too much warmth I really just would like to have the um, magician like the, the power themselves to be either lime green or just blue light blue I wasn't unsure of that but this was the base idea and concept and I just wanted the customer to let me know if he liked first of all the actual um, hang on did he like the sketch <laughs> and he said yes so I went ahead and worked on the composition and the color which wasn't like fully like this I've changed stuff afterwards but he really really liked it so I went ahead and I did a clean version of the actual sketch line so this is my clean line work I will have that a part of a coloring book I don't know when or where or like in what book <laughs> because I already did a dark fantasy so maybe I'll work with something along like witches and dark magic or something but uh, yeah she will be a part of a book at some point so I haven't worked on like a line art for coloring book precisely I've just did clean lines um, because I was in a rush in a way but like I didn't want to spend too long on that because I wasn't going to use them 
um, I didn't really need it basically coloring lines I just needed some guidelines so it's 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 a rough sketch but it's clean enough for me to trace on canvas so here's a close-up of the face and um, she had like a little bit like of a twisted smile practicing magic she has little magic in her hand this is going to be surrounded by magic glow and this was the pose now this was the first um, like crop I had um, I've seen like um, this was the first crop basically meaning that I was unsure really um, the scale of things if I wanted to crop it to the knees or not but this was the original idea however when I started working um, on like the actual measurements I wanted to have enough room to paint the face and because it's a pretty long character with the hat and the moon um, I was confused at first I was like unsure if I would have enough room basically to paint and the canvas size is a pretty big one it's like 83 centimeter like high so it's a pretty big one but still the face at first was very small when I printed it so I had to change the composition and I took also the time to do a complete digital version and so this was the composition this is not like the actual uh, cropped version that I've did but this was the clean concept art with colors with the glow everything um, I spent like four hours on this I didn't really need it to do a complete digital version but I really wanted to have one so I can know exactly the colors the lights and you know basically a concept art and um, because it's digital it's not going to translate fully like that on paintings because I don't have the same vibrancy when it comes to color, especially for like this neon green and especially for this neon green and basically it's not the same system when you work with paints, uh, it's going to be a little bit more dull. So I don't know about that. Um, I do have acrylics that are very vibrant, but I just knew that he wanted bright colors. So I think I, um, you know, I went a bit overboard with the saturation because I knew that when I was going to paint it, it will be a little bit more muted. So that was the actual colored concept art. Sent that to the customer and he was so pleased that he only replied with like magnificent. And like everyone, he. Uh, his team were all like uh, agreeing on that <laughs> so basically um, like I said I was very free and every time I sent an email the customer was super happy so I was really pleased with that so that was like the base um, work to prepare the concept art lastly I'm gonna show you the actual crop version that I sent uh, which is this one because I had to adjust a little bit of parts of the, the, the drawing basically next I'm gonna show you quickly just this was like what I sent to the customer I really like this version because I had more room with the sky and it's just really floating like there's room around her but I didn't have enough room for the face um, if I wanted to paint at a scale that I'm comfortable with um, I would have to either do a larger painting or use very tiny brushes and I really wanted to have room to really work on the details I know that you can do very miniature painting but I'm not really the best uh, yet at making artwork with paints and uh, I still wanted to have a bit more control so I've changed the ratio I've basically reduced the moon and changed the hat a tiny bit so it's a little bit shorter and the moon also is shorter there's not as much uh, in the sky but I still like it that way and I crop at her knees so that way it's a little bit more snug I don't have an, uh, like a lot of room around her but it still works and um, yeah I like them both I would have prefer a little bit more around her but I still really like this version and the client uh, was really happy with it I don't think um, someone who's not really um, in in the art industry or who hasn't seen this version first uh, would really notice that um, so I was really happy with this so this is where I ended up uh, with the concept art and then what I had to do was now print the actual lines 
and then transfer everything. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So now what I had to do was basically print out the actual line work at the proper size. Because it's a pretty big painting, what I had to do is uh, take my artwork, divide it between the actual parts that I needed so I can print it out on a free printer paper. Um, so I did that basically on, uh, on uh, Photoshop. I uh, scaled down the actual moon and I rework on the line work. I've positioned things differently so I can actually have it closer to what I wanted based on my uh, digital concept work that I've shot previously, the actual final version with the proper crop. So I did that and then I went ahead and just open a new file, a free size, and I've pasted down the actual line work, dividing it, it in, I think I had like six pages, and I printed out everything, and then it was time for me to uh, assemble all the parts, and it was a little bit of a tedious process, but I didn't really mind it. Um, it's part of the process, you know, so I've trimmed everything, pasted stuff together with tape, making sure that I didn't have too much overlapping. And yeah, my actual concept art line work was ready to be transferred. Now I did something very important. I printed out a flipped version. If you want to use it uh, with not um, with like actual transfer paper. You don't really need that because you can just use like graphite transfer paper underneath and then come on top of your line work um, with the actual design that you have. You just use paper. But I figured that it wouldn't really work and I didn't want to use graphite powder because it leaves a lot of marks on the painting. So at first I was like, no, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to actually use uh, like transfer paper that you can draw on and then flip the page and then transfer the lines. So that is why I did a flipped version. That way I only have to sketch it at one time, flip it, and then it's in the right position. And then I went ahead and did all the line work and then I've started to actually transfer it on the canvas and it was a nightmare <laughs> because um, I've used like it a, a like an oil based pencil or something but I couldn't get it off like seriously you guys I pressed so hard and it wasn't transferring at all because the canvas is basically a canvas it's not like a hard surface so as I was working with on it it basically just made like a a dent or something but I wasn't touching the surface so I've lost my mind and I've took a break and I ate strawberries <laughs> because I was like so upset and so fed up with this and it's one of the things that it just makes you mad at some point because you really want to work on stuff and it doesn't work so i've changed my um like all what i was doing and i was trying to use transfer paper so i put my graphite paper underneath and it was working a little bit better but not so much so i ended up basically using an actual ballpoint pen so i can transfer the artwork still using transfer paper and then also the actual line work that I've just uh, traced myself. Because with the ballpoint pen, it was a little bit more intense when I was pressing on it, so I was able to see the lines. But I still ended up with like a blue tone, graphite tone base sketch line, which wasn't ideal because, like I said, I didn't want to have graphite laying on top on like on top of the canvas so i was a little bit bummed by that but it was still okay because i knew that i would have it entirely covered so that was fine with me and yeah so that was like the process of getting it on a canvas and the rest of this was basically making sure that i had my first base layer now um i could just start working on it with my pencil line, but I really just had a hard time seeing them. So I knew that I had to actually have a base line work 
with like a toned down version of acrylic paint. So what I did is actually mix an indigo acrylic, but I really watered it down so it's almost like a fluid acrylic or like a watercolor acrylic. And I did all the line work and it took me a while. But I was really pleased with that because as I'm recording this, I, of course, I am working on the painting and seeing my base lines underneath is so helpful, you guys. So if you want to work on the painting on a canvas, I really encourage you to have it line, like slightly lined or at least with a guideline that is either dark enough or thick enough or that you can see enough so you can work on the painting afterwards. Um, maybe when I will get used to painting again and I want to have more like of a flow and not as much of a like drawing with paint, maybe I can skip that process. But for this one, I really wanted to make sure that it was true to the concept art. So that's what I did. And so yeah, I will just let you enjoy the rest of this line work and show you how it looks in the end. But uh, yeah, this is the process of me just preparing a canvas from a um, zero to like the best base layer and start then to paint. I basically finished the line work and then I was about to start working on the background and that will be for a different video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!